Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, I've been having a lot of requests to do some more snow scenes, so I thought we would get into that. I did one with a little river and and uh, ice and ice across the river, and I, that one was very popular. It's back in almost a year ago, and I thought I would do something not similar, but we'll use some of those same elements, show you the warm and cool painting of, of snow, of whites, which can be get very difficult because white is one of the lightest and opaque colors that we have. So anyway, we'll, we'll work on our warms and cools. We'll work on textures also as well and how to paint this snow painting without getting it too white. That's what we're going to concentrate on today, okay? So what I have over here first is this is a 14 inch by 18 inch panel and uh, you could also use like a canvas panel and then I uh, used some of the uh, canvas prep medium on it, gave it one coat but kind of rough, a little bit rough and so I can see some of my brush marks. Now I like to do that especially if I'm going to paint a scene like this that I'm going to put you know back trees and mountains in because the different types of the textures of those brush marks will pick up paint slightly different. A canvas weave would also work for this uh, for this technique so but I do like the panels so I did that let it dry thoroughly and then just lightly sanded it a little bit to uh, to take the uh, the the sharpness or the, the harshness off of the surface. I do like to leave that matte so I don't uh, you know use gessos or anything like that I like the canvas prep medium which is this product that we have right here, which is the Heritage Canvas Prep Medium. Um, and it leaves a good matte surface for us to work on. Okay, so 14 inches this way, 18 inches this way. I've got myself some reference photos out from Adobe and stuff, and uh, I'm just gonna use those for reference. I'm not gonna be copying anything. We're gonna create this as we go. My colors, these are my, uh, these are the uh, Dave's favorite that uh, the studio has all the links for all the colors, names, and everything are right below the video in the video description. You click that, you can go get them in Amazon or you can go get them at our studio, okay? This is the extender medium that uh, we use to slow down the drying time. I use this whenever I want it thin. This is the Matisse right here, uh, the D Matisse Derivan, the Derivan Matisse actually, uh, open medium, which is a thicker medium. You see me use that. So I use a both. If I'm starting out and I want it thin, I use the extender medium. If I'm building textures and stuff, I usually use the open medium. But all of these colors are out there and we're ready to go, okay? So I'm just gonna take, uh, this is a, uh, number 10 uh, fusion flat and i'm going to take a little bit i like kind of a grayish color a little blue a little uh burnt sienna and uh, some white here and this just a real soft grayish color let's let's just kind of sketch in very lightly what we might want to do so i want to leave some room for some sky because i want to put some distant mountains coming back in this way so let's leave a little room. Let's uh, maybe push in uh, the idea of a, of a, uh, not a, not a huge pointed mountain, but just a soft, rounded kind of hill of a mountain here. Maybe another one that's going to come back up behind, that may disappear back up here. That might be kind of fun. And you know me when I when I do landscapes, what I like to do is I like to put them in triangles, triangle shapes, because triangle shapes. So here's a triangle shape and a triangle shape. Triangle shapes. Um, get really easy to establish distance within your painting. So we try to overlap several triangle shapes. So let's bring one in that will, so if this mountain comes in there, let's bring one in that's gonna come down this way, maybe one coming this way, so that forward hill. So it's a set of hills going back, if that makes sense. I will put my vanishing point, this is the point, so I'll put my lower uh, idea here of my for, my foreground so that's my basically this would be called the skyline this would be called the horizon line a distance line and i'll put that right back in here and i'll make my vanishing point which is the point i want to take this little river maybe right back over here not right in the center i'll put it right back up over there <clears throat> and we'll bring in so after i put that i can put some little hills and stuff like that in there and then We'll uh, bring in some other little hills. That's, and we'll start to come forward and maybe right down into this area. Grab a little bit more color. 
right down into this area. So right in here, we'll bring in some of the water, maybe some of the, the ice that we're going to want to paint that we see right back up over there. And uh, so we'll bring that in and some of it right back over here and leave more of the water over there. So that'll be good. Let's uh, define that vanishing point just a touch more, a little more color right in here. Define that just a bit more right up in here. And I, like I said, I'll use burnt sienna's blues and stuff like that. That'll be pretty good. And we'll get some a nice, that'll play against a nice snow mountain. When I do stuff like that, especially right along that edge, uh, and I'm going to be painting some different types of trees and stuff, I like to really get that color loosened up. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take a larger, this is my one-inch brush, just some water because I want this to dry pretty fast. Water and blue and uh, a little green here. And... We'll just, yeah, that's a good color. And it's going to be a little heavy, and I'll soften it out. I can always paint it back and soften it out. But I want to get right along here where that is going to play, right up in there. I want to get some ideas and loosen some of this up. And I loosen up some of my whites and stuff and create some interest back there. And this does a couple things. I know sometimes my students think I'm a little crazy when I do this, but this also, one of the things it does for me is it, it starts to loosen up my technique. I'm sometimes a very tight painter, and if I come in here and just start hitting, especially that vanishing point right in there where I want that to go in, if I start hitting that with color and stuff and loosen this up, this might be trees and stuff like that right up in here along these points then I feel a lot better after I get some of this loosened up in there. So if that makes sense, let's take a little more blue over here. We'll go and up in the front of this one right here is a real deep blue, blue violet. Let's put some of that in, even though it will probably adjust it. And I'll use just water here with this blue, violet, a little bit of white. And um, I use just water. Let me get my value scale here so you guys can see about what value I'm at, right about a four or so. It'll dry a, a value or so darker. Let's just drop this in, right in here. And a little bit of that color, so that's the nice dark color that you're gonna see up there into the front. We'll lighten this up, grab some of these other colors here, which is gonna come right into our water up here. Water and ice. And again, we'll just let this, this is just an idea, right? This is, we're not going to get perfect. We're just going to put in the idea here, right there like that. And uh, I haven't lost my mind, <laughs> okay? So, but this is a great way to do it, guys, especially if you're like me and you started out such a, a stiff painter. This is a great way to just start loosening up and uh, just tossing on some of this color and getting some of the, this, you know, this area set. Let's take, um, and let's take some of this color and we're gonna, I'm gonna do mostly cloudy skies, but let's uh, take some of this lighter up here and into the sky a bit, because I want to mostly graze into my skies, but I always like to push that under the clip there. I want uh, some of the blues and stuff here to uh, just suggest the light, the lightness of the, and I'll maybe even go back behind the hills here a bit. Very loose, very casual. Everything I do right now, I like it loose, casual, a little bit of paper towel work in there. So we'll set, we're going to set up the vanishing points, set up our hills, set up everything going this way, and hopefully it'll work, okay? All right, so... I'm going to, uh, now, I'm going to set in some of the, the colors, and I'm going to do this over several layers, setting in the colors. I really like, and I don't, you can hardly see it up there, but I really like how, you know, the, the trees and snow on a mountain interplay with each other, and you get that nice granulated look. So I want to concentrate on developing some of that, and uh, I want some of these greens and siennas yellows and stuff that are going to uh, happen 
here and it's gonna it's only gonna happen by doing this and repeating these colors and stuff several times so and the other thing I have to do is kind of determine where am I gonna bring my light in I think I'm gonna bring my light in this this direction here so right now so this side over here would be the lighter side and so for right now I'm just going to push in some of these colors into this mountain and we'll add a little more blue and light to it so it's more atmospheric back here if that makes sense right we get more atmospheric going back so I'll push some of those colors in let's get the as we come forward in the scene of course the colors they're coming at us they'll get a little bit uh, more depth to it, dimension to them so we'll add some additional color coming forward right up here so not quite as much white let's just push this in and you got to imagine this is like little trees and stuff like that so sometimes nice little vertical movements and stuff in there right and then we'll change color slightly let's go a little more burnt sienna and yellow here and I'm using just water you could if you want to play around in there I don't because all this is going to cover up but if you wanted to play around a little bit you could add a little extender to it let's get some of these colors in here okay just and that's what I'm looking for just breaking up the mountains and stuff here with some of these colors and uh, uh, that I'll then play the snow against and as we go so that's that mountain as we go back We'll add a little bit of atmosphere to those colors, see, and push some of those in there. Just tap those around and push those around right back there so you'll get the distance. Of course, we'll push this other mountain further back here in just a little bit as well, okay? And let's go a little bit heavier. Green, yellow, burnt siennas, uh, more burnt sienna and yellow and stuff into this. Let's grab some of that right up in here, right around our focal area, pushing that around. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm looking for more than anything else what we're doing here. And I know it looks kind of crazy, but it'll work. Um, what we're doing here is we're setting up the atmospherics of our color. Does that make sense? So here I've got it heavier. One step back more with, you know, thinner and a little bit more blue and more blue yet. And I've showed you all different kinds of ways in paintings to set up atmospherics, but this is a really a great way too. So now I'll take just a little bit of that color and let's just touch it into a few areas up in here. This is the warmth and stuff of our color and this will harmonize our entire painting sometimes you see me thin this way out and you see me do this and you see me just thin wash a color of that goes into the sky as well because the sky can carry some of those colors and some of those grays all right let's continue to build that now if you want uh, for even more interest you can flip over and start to paint a little bit with your knife I do like the knife. The knife to me is, especially when I'm painting mountains and stuff, the knife is, uh, is, is just magical. Let's take a little bit of this light and blue and burnt sienna. Don't, don't mix it up too well. Let's get a little yellow into that. A little more burnt sienna. I like the, love that, those colors of the burnt sienna. And let's just push some of those colors right up in here and I'll see I like that that boom there's a bit of that burnt sienna coming out of there bit of that burnt sienna and some of that yellow right up here get some of that going right in here and we'll get the we'll get the uh you know the snow and stuff in here too which will lighten this up but what I'm looking for is here I'm kind of angling this way because that's the angle of the mountain here kind of angling that way and that's a little that's a little too much I'll take that out okay but and I don't worry about it I'll just soften that edge boom push that back in 
you can add little cuts, maybe little horizontals, little verticals, uh, you, you know, in as you, this will make little uh, valleys, ridges and stuff to your mountain as you're building that up in there. But, uh, you know, don't be afraid of it here. So there, we'll push that in. Let's go a little darker, a little more burnt sienna, some of this blue and stuff right up in here. We'll grab some of that. Some more burnt sienna right up in here. This will be the darker area right up here, which is going to be my, of course, my, and see, I'll take my towel, run some verticals, but this is my vanishing point, my, my where I want the viewer to travel back here into my painting, right back up in here. As a matter of fact, let's just get that a little bit heavier, and we can soften it, too, so... Let's get that a little bit darker, heavier right up there. Maybe even a little violet into that. A little cool violet right up into there. So you see where that's going to go. Now let's go back. And I change up all the time. So that was with the knife, a little bit of interest with the knife. Let's go with a three-quarter inch brush. And let me grab a new fresh paper towel. Three-quarter inch brush. Let's get back up there right along where some of our snow might be. And this is sometimes where I might even add a little open medium because I love how open medium makes my colors slide. Now look what happens. See, as I slide through here, I'll pick up little ridges of the color. That's what I'm looking for here. Little bits, that's a little too dark for the light side. So we'll just pick up some light, maybe a little yellow with that. Not up here around a value eight or so, not pure white. And let's just come through that, boom, right like that. Leave some of it, you could leave some of it coming through because that's just gonna give us the interest of the mountain there, okay? And maybe a little more light, let me just show you, you know, so, so this might be where some of the light of the snow is gonna be through here, see, boom, right through touch those areas see that's what it's going to look like see as you pick that up you start to see the snow and you leave some of those other broken colors back down through here uh, maybe some of this touches up and down here and you pull some down this way if you get some different angle cuts to it and stuff that's what we're looking for those cuts and I really do love I'm going to take some open medium right with some of this light this is my fun part that I love to do Oop, got a little bit of blue on the back of that so we'll take some of that right here this is where I love to do and see that's the broken line of that snow that sits back up there see and that open medium slides see how it slides and I can you know if I lift the pressure on the knife so I lift the pressure on the knife lightly slide I get all these little broken edges and stuff like that through there and that's what I like let's take a bit of dark let me show you you can remove back the other way by pushing up to that uh, that open medium or to that light by pushing up to it and remove back. So if I, if I, as I'm building this, if I want to pull that snow down, get rid of a little bit of that blue, pull that snow down, I push a little harder and it'll lift that up. And as you just saw, sometimes I'll tap to kind of break up an area there as well. And see, I love, this is the broken edges of this color, see? And that just works so well. Let's grab a little bit of this dark. That's a little too dark, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna grab a little more open medium, model this up with some of my lights here, and just take some of that out and let some of that look like the snow and other things going on in the mountains there, okay? And um, let's take some of this light, lighter little bit of it up over here. Boom, like that. Some of our mountain color over here. Softer. Um, 
and I'm just kind of filling in the edges here. There's some of this and, you know, looking for ridges, different things, tapping sometimes, you know, imagining different little ridges like we could imagine a, a slightly different little ridge right there. I'll pick up some heavier white, pull right here and create like a second little ridge line right there. Uh, maybe this one will break it up a bit, a bit more light. Soften some of the edges, use your finger, soften some of those edges that pushes it back a bit here. But see, this is the broken, see this broken edges really do a lot for the look of this mountain here these broken little edges and there we go and if you if you soften them out a lot the mountain will recede so I'm gonna leave this like right here for just a moment let's go into that back back here we'll add a little bit of blue and white to this so it's softer and let's push this back here and then we'll soften some of this this time. Those little fractured edges get softer and that sets that other mountain back behind. Do you see that? Edges are so important to what we paint. And so that sets it a little bit behind. Let's set a slightly bit of more uh, of earth color into there, a little more burnt sienna, some of those earth colors, little open medium, little light model that up here model it, it means i'm tapping it and working it on the pa palette here but i'm not mixing it i'm tapping it and working it so i get some s different slides of color coming off there like that see okay so this might be too much for our focal point right here and if it is i just press the knife and i soften it out that look out and Maybe add a little softer pull of that light down. You set the slope, right? You've, you've seen me so many times set the slope and stuff of hills and stuff that I paint just by how I use the knife. Am I up and down or how? what angle and stuff am I pulling through to set that slope of that hill? Let's uh, break up some of this snow. So I'll take this maybe a little bit of the open medium in it, tap this through, tap it through, model it just a bit, and it'll pull down, see, and I can, and this is where you start to see some of those, see those little ridges that I had here from the, uh, the paint, from the prep, you start to see that. And I can pull with them to soften some of that soften some of that around and leave some of that broken edges but now look at all the beautiful colors that are down below there down below the look of snow and I can increase the look of snow right up here like that is a little more snow right there along that edge right there soften this one a bit here and so you can start building and looking at your mountain there about how your mountain is, you know, a few verticals, pull down a few verticals for sharp ed you know, edges and stuff in your mountain or trees right up there, you know. What's, what's it gonna be? You know, just uh, let's put a little green, yellow green in some of this. Just break some of that up a bit here. There we go. There we go. Just like so, you know, if you want more, do you want more contrast and stuff? That's all for you to decide. Let's take some of this, a little burnt sienna, and we'll come right down here and just model this right now. Right down in here for the, the low part. A lot of times I put in like mist and stuff like that. And we might. We might put some of that mist back up in there. That's really, really easy to add. I'm going to take a big brush. I'll show you. Just take a big brush. And right now I'll just use a little water here. And just soften down. And create the, the mist really of the, uh, the mountain here. 
as it comes down. Mist sometimes pushes it back and softens it out a, a touch, you know, so we can have that so you can see this lifting. And maybe right up here by the top on the light side, maybe I want just a little more contrast of the snow up here. That's your, that's your call. You can, you can uh, decide whether or not you want, how much contrast you want up there. Maybe this is another little ridge line right there of that. And we'll just soften that back edge. So it's not just a perfect, you know, angle going down. You have more things going on here. And boom, nether. There we go. Just a, you know, just so I, I can pick up um, a little variation. In other words, not just a perfect little angle down. Here we go. You pick up some some other things happening here. And you can play around with a mountain like this forever. I love painting them like this. It's just so much fun. I'm going to wipe my knife and just lift that up just a bit there like that. And it gives that brings that point of that out again. Maybe an angle of that up here. Just a... Boom, just like that, you can see. And they're just so much fun to paint. But as you go back, take a little bit of blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. This creates that gray. Let's add some grayness, a little bit of white to this. As you go back here, and then take your finger or a brush and soften it out so that you don't have that, you don't have this look Back there, it's softer, and that pushes it further back. If that makes sense, maybe a touch more light right up here on that. And, you know, a higher mountain will get more snow all over it, so that's up to you if you want to uh, show some more additional snow back there. That's up to you. That's good. And... Um, Let's take, let's go to my three quarter inch brush and we'll take some of these other colors here and we'll do the up and down. Now, you know, trees that, you know, that intermix with the snow and stuff, they'll get a lot of up and down kind of look to them. And to separate this front triangle, so here this triangle is setting back and it's not doing it like too, too well, but we could put some snuff, soft snow Boy, say that three times. Soft snow. <laughs> three Boy, soft snow back here and create like a little valley right back there. That's kind of neat. Um, and maybe some of that can come up here right up to the front edge and see this light into the back will help this ridge line here advance. Here, we'll take some of that off there. That'll look pretty good. We can even put in maybe a touch lighter on the lifting side of this, which would be the light struck side here. Here we go, just a bit. So, and so what I'm looking at is how these are crossing. So a softer and a lighter. I can just tap maybe a little bit, a couple of areas. You don't need it like crazy. But then see how that advances that ridge line. See, just a few... Tap. Don't go all the whole thing. Just a couple of taps advances that ridge line. Maybe a touch more right up there. That gives that. We'll give that a, almost not quite a point, but a nice interest area right there. Okay. And yeah, yeah the, I I like this. This might need a little bit of green in there just to break that a touch. That's up to you. That's a artist's choice. A little bit of green can break that. Here, just a, here we go. And see some of those other colors in there. There we go. Just like that. Now, let's get back. Let's get back up over here to this one. Back to my three-quarter inch. And um, I'm just going to move some of these more in vertical and when I go more in vertical that's going to start making it look more and more like trees and stuff that are coming in here 
So your brush movement is going to suggest what these things are. So let's get a little greens, some of these mottled colors in here. And so soft. And you can leave some of them a little more pointed with the chisel of your brush here. Pull some of this back. And on a detailed painting, I would repeat this like seven or eight times going back and forth. You know, on a real quick painting, just a couple times. And, uh, but this gives it the impression of trees here sitting up in front. And sometimes a little bit of snow, a little bit of snow pulling through there. You know, just boom, boom, boom. And build these a little more green, a little more burnt sienna and stuff down here. Burn, build some other areas, other trees coming down. Maybe some of those trees come down over here. Okay, a little burnt sienna and green. That's just beautiful colors. Sometimes a little blue, gray it up a bit. Get some of these colors in there. A um, little bit of blue and burnt sienna here. Get some of them a little bit more burnt sienna. Not, that helps gray it down so we're not too, too heavy. Just a little. And these can get a little heavier here. A little few heavier marks. You know, like, boom, here comes some trees. And the paint is... You know, you can see I, I'm turning and twisting my brush so I get different angles here. Uh, and sometimes I will do what I call burnish that in. Take this knife and just push really hard and burnish that in to uh, soften some of the angles. If you want to soften them even more, think about it. If you want to soften them even more, what's one thing that you have? Even if your colors, like with the Heritage, after a while, those color, I mean, any kind of acrylics will dry. But what do you have? Solvent, your solvent, your water. Take your damp brush with just a little bit of water in it and see how I can soften, let's take that one out, soften some of this down. Just very, you know, and with the heritage, you don't need very much water here whatsoever. But I can pull that down. And see, it's it's an all a matter of textures is what we're really doing more than anything else. It's textures and given the ideas here. So I'll take this, maybe just a touch of water, thin this out a bit more. And you see, I build another layer here with slightly different colors. And that just starts making it look like edges of trees. You can take some of this softly back up into some of the other areas here. But as you go back, what happens to your movement? It gets smaller, right? And we don't want to destroy that misty look too much. As a matter of fact, we might want to just reemphasize that mist just a bit more. Boom. And sometimes you see me on the other paintings. I don't think I need to do it here. You see me on the other paintings take the sky color down. Let me just show you that because it, it works really nice. Take a little bit of the sky color. Let's add a little extender. This will keep this really wet for you. It's kind of a very light blue-gray. And you push that right over this. And that truly recedes it, if that makes sense. See how that truly recedes it there? Okay, so, you know, that's a that's an artist thing. Are you going to, you know, push that back? What are you going to do with that? Okay, your choice. That's your choice. And we'll come back here. Let's just pick this up a little softer. So through that mist, we can pick up the movement still of those hills, right? But as they rise up and they come up out of that out of that mist, you see them a little bit more there, and that'll help you with the distance there. Now, let's go up and take care of, uh, let's go back, take care of that violet and blue and white. This is going to be the sky, so I uh, just 
going to use up all my white. So I'm going to get a little bit more out here. Here, just like that. Okay, so we'll come down here. I want to get it up around a value 8 to a 9. So I'm right, right up about a 9. And it's going to dry a touch darker, so keep that. But this is a nice kind of gray. Okay, and you can see it touching. I'm going to add a little extender to this. And I want this, you know, I've said to you all the time, don't mix it up too much. This one I'm going to mix up a little bit more now. Why? Because I don't want too, I, a little bit more. I don't want too many streaks up into the sky. I want to be able to control that here. So here I'm going to just let that sky, especially right back here, let that sky go right over and into the mountain. So this is going to really pop the depth of the painting back here. So that mountain goes right back up into the sky back there. And then as I come forward over here, I'm going to bring this just a touch more blue here. So, And you can put in clouds like we've done before. That's up to you. I'll paint down towards that that mountain there but I want to have uh, the mountain slowly coming out and maybe uh, get away from some of that other mixes of color here let's put that cooler violet in which is the violet of this of the winter here it's a little too much and some extender some white that's pretty a little more blue into that and let's put some of that in okay softly there and let's get just a touch more blue now this is all my choice on this so but i want to uh keep a little bit of blue right up here into the front of this and let that mountain play up against it there just like that Whisper, but you pick up some of those other colors back up in through there. Do you see that? Okay. So, and maybe a, a touch lighter just right down in here. It's a bit dark. Remember when we talked about atmospherics before? Up along the horizon line, the colors actually get lighter. So, maybe just a little touch. Now, so, you know, that's a, a really pretty kind of winter sky back up in there. And I'm just going to take some of these colors and I'm going to push them right down in here. Because what is water? Water is sky, right? Water is sky. Let's take those. Let's get some of that bit of that blue and dark right down here. You can add a little open medium, a little extender. All of that is okay. I want to just put in some of that color. I see it right up in in that area really well, but I don't see a ton of it, so I don't want to use a lot. Don't drag it everywhere. Just like that mountain. How many, when I'm painting that mountain, how many times did I change those colors as I'm working it? We want to do the same thing up here, right? Change those colors. Let's get a little bit of that green and stuff right up here. A green, that burnt sienna and that blue is just magical for those grays, right? Get those grays and some of those greens in here. Pick up some of those beautiful colors. Let's take some of that, lighten it up here. Add a little extender to this slide. Let's just slide some of that into what is going to be our ice right here. And just push that around but see now you still see some of my warm colors that I put in when I started that whole bit right back here you see some of those warm colors and that works really nice let's take just a bit of this back up in here this is water and ice and pull some of this through up and down we know that good Vertical strokes give you the nice reflections and stuff. So a few vertical strokes in there to do that. Let's take some of these colors, like we see up over here, some of these colors down into this water right here, which is going to be our burnt sienna. A little yellow, a little bit of blue, some of these colors right down in here. 
Let's and let's add a bit of extender to this so it slides. Okay, let's just pull some of those. Those are our mountain colors and stuff here. These hills, that's a bit too red right there, but that's okay. We'll just take a little yellow and green and pull right through that. There and down. Okay, maybe uh, a bit more burnt sienna and blue. One of my favorite painting colors. Pull some of that through. But see, this is what I'm looking for. Remember when I put that mountain in? I'm looking for those variations of color. And now I'm going to start, even when I'm putting this on, I'm going to look for those variations of color, modeling of that color. Now, I'm going to rinse out my brush here real quick. And you can put, um, I just, I mean, with some water, and I'm going to pull it tight. You can put a little bit of extender into it. That just causes your brush to slide over the surface. But let's just be very careful and pull down here. This creates the look of the, the pulling down, creates the look of the still water. The side to side here will give just a touch of movement to it, but that creates the look of the still water here. And I'm going to leave that. I like that. Sometimes I will take it, you know, maybe put a little lighter blue like you see up there. A real great way to do that is with your knife. Take your knife and push that in because it sits it right up on top. Do you see that? And then you can take your larger brush and pull down through to give it that look and soften that out so you can get some more model color in there. But that looks uh, pretty good like that. Now let's take some of all this beautiful violets, blue violets, whites here. And let's add some of that right up here into the front here. A little bit of those purpley violets where you see that. See that color right here. See? Let's grab some of this here and model that through here. Grab some of that. And see, I like to use a knife because I, and I try not to mix it up too much. Let's, what do you see right in through here is that light, that broken. So let's take some of this other color right in here and break that. This is just like painting the, the uh, mountain there. We'll break that, okay. Then we'll take some of our light, model through some of that here and pull some of that through and see how I work my knife different directions. See, tap it, pull it through so I don't grab everything perfect. Now, if you want to soften it, you might want to use a smaller brush that come in there and just touch some of the edges to soften some of that, but leave some of that, those that brokenness of it that will uh, give it the, uh, the look of the snow, of the light hitting different edges of the snow. Let's put a little more light right in there. Right in there. Tap it in. There we go. Tap that in. Nice little broken edges. Here you can just come right down through here. Little broken edges of that. There's that snow coming right on the edge of the water there you can you can pull up right to the edge and, and lift some of it off if you need to for the edges this is not too bad but I'm just going to tap along it a bit just to break that up uh, create some highs and lows there of it I love to paint the snow here with the knife this works so well let's put that bigger clump of snow right in there right in there now most of the light would be shimmering from the left because we pushed that left right this way so let's just pull some shimmering snow from the left this way this way in the painting okay and you know do you want to leave it shimmering like that so you have just a little bit of that that yellow and burnt sienna into it to warm it up against that violet we put in there earlier. So that's up to you. Do you want to leave it like that? Do you want to soften that out? But see, I love this, that broken here. 
there that edge let's come back here with some of this cooler violet and the white and let's put this back edge in back here a little more violet this is receding snow back here lighten it up just a touch more and see that knife just does that wonderful job of marking of making that with those variations and that interest in there and we'll pull this along let's go right up towards we'll push it back here a little further back right back there maybe there's a break into the the edge of the water there and uh, we'll push that back and see you can uh, you can take any burnt sienna green blue this kind of stuff back here and just push that right back along and that will shove that shoreline a little further back there see push right into the white and that gives you just this mottled look which is great we can uh, take just a bit pull this out now see you wanna you want to keep this softer the lightest lights are going to be up here maybe up towards our mountain a little bit but we want to keep this back here a little softer so that uh, it recedes here. So work it into some of these other colors or do like I do here. Take some of these colors soft and then just run right through them and you'll push the, the lightness out of that color. And that's what we want to try to do. We'll put a little bit of light here, a little bit because it's got to have its highlights and shadows and stuff. So a little bit of light. And right along that edge. Here, pull some through. There, like that. Gives it that impression. That's kind of neat. You know, back up through here. You know, a little bit of the light and snow hitting amongst the trees there. So we'll give the impression of these little trees and little bits of light in there. And so I'll put it on like that. I'm going to go to a smaller brush back to my 10 here and just soften some of that through like this so it recedes. And we'll push up like into the tree line there a bit. But uh, that will maybe a few little edges uh, going a little deeper into the tree line here. A few little verticals. It's all the impressions of it now, see? All the impressions that we want to have. We can, uh, I'm going to put out even a little bit more white here. These uh, snow scenes like this are so fun to paint and create. As long as you remember, as you push back here, your white becomes more of that gray. That's what you want. You want more of that gray. And it's going to get very white, light, and dark and stuff up here. That's going to set the, the depth here to your painting, right? So let's take a little bit. This was back here. So let's just establish. This is more of my violet color. Let's just establish that back. Maybe that little stream is coming right back there. Let's put just a touch of white on this side here. It got hit by the light right there, okay? And um, let's just smush, let's just thin, thin, thin all these colors here. And just thin, thin, thin out through here. And, it's, and we'll push this around. And see, the color has no power, but yet I'm just kind of almost like glazing it on there so it stays soft, so it can look like ice and other little things going on there. Let's just take that back, that edge, soften that out just a bit. And, uh, but, you know, the colors here are thin, so they have no power, so I'm just whispering them on. And it's a color thing more than anything else. This is all a color thing. So if I take this brush, you could do this with the brush or the knife, and I just hit an edge, it's going to look like the edge of ice and stuff back here, see? But I could also do that with the knife. Both looks, both of them work really nice. And that's up to you to see. See, that just works like a little edge there as well. 
we can take a little a touch of the blue if you want to make that look more like water back there push in just a bit of the blue maybe a bit deeper in color water is sky so a bit of that in there okay and grab your lights Boom, just a little bit of that pulling through here. As it goes back there, I gotta soften that out a little bit and so I can just wipe my knife and pull through and that will soften that out. I can reestablish some of those burnt sienna green yellows. Reestablish some of that back in there. Pull some of that through. There we go. Just little bits of that color. There. There we go. See, it's just, it's given the impression, see? I'm not really painting anything, but watching how these colors are interacting with each other. And, you know, am I making a little icy edge there to this little stream here? As it's coming off of the mountain. Is that working as a little icy edge coming through there? You know, just back and it just disappears back there. Here, just like that. Just disappears back there. And I can bring, you know, I get, you can do them dark, you can do them a little bit light here. Let's do just a touch light. That's gonna be too green. A little bit of snow, a little bit of light here, a uh, bit of bit grayer, so a little bit blue and burnt sienna that'll help gray it. It's the gray I'm using here. Just a few little touches here. Just to give that. Now that's still a little green, so I'll gray that back. Let's make it a lighter gray. Pull that through. There we go. A little bit of that color. There. And I like to uh, sometimes get that the shadow, the darker part of the tree. I like to pull that down into the snow. So I'll grab my brush like this and I'll just pull down slightly and see it creates that mottled little edge, which is that, that granulated little edge is a good way to say it. Right there, so it pulls these trees down here. For the look of those trees down, right down like that. So that's this blue burnt sienna. This time, oop, there's a bit of violet in there blue burnt sienna and don't uh, don't lighten it up too much just pull down and it'll leave that shadow edge there here we go just like that soften that see it just gives a little impression that that's going all the way back there and we can give the impression of a you know, maybe another tree or so, or two right up in here and pull that down towards that edge. You know, just uh, ideas, just, you know, don't need to, we don't need to go in there with a whole bunch of branches and stuff. This is more what we call a la prima. It's very, very simplistic here. And, uh, you know, so we'll add a few here, bits of this right in there. And uh, then I'll soften that. I'll put it back into position here. Soften some of these edges with a little bit of my gray. What softens everything? Your gray. And this is what I want to do is just, I want to paint the impressions of it. Now, that's really dark. It's really coming forward, but I, I'm liking it, but it's just a little too much. So I just start so all I do is just start running through it with a little gray until I like its color. Maybe leaving it a little darker here. 
on the bottom and leaving some of these little bits or marks here or a little bit of the light there little bits and marks that take the interest it gives the the choppiness to the snow and stuff like that and you know you might come through and say oh let's put in a snow bank right here you know boom there's a snow bank and let's just take our cooler violet and push up through and put the shadow side of that snow bank in there okay boom maybe a bit more of a snow bank right here and that angle is to the left because light is to the left right boom a little bit right in there right and to make more of the edge of the ice here then we just take our knife right on the edge here pull that fractured edge you can fracture it and then just pull along that edge just so you put the edge on and then smear it out a little bit soft soft edges a little bit more harsh edges not just a thin line just it, it varies back and forth on, around there and bring some of that so let's put a little bit of that violet into that bring some of that out just a little fur farther different lines of snow here break those edges maybe uh, a little farther out right in here you can smush push hard and it'll look like it's turning into ice right here so this is still wet right here because I put that extender and that open medium in it and you know there it's really harsh but if I want to make it more like ice I just push and incorporate those colors together and it looks more like a little bit of ice coming out the violets the blue violets and the lights there just like that and over here of course heavier whites here right up there into the front so it's a you know it's a setup of we're going to have the lights and whites and yellows here to the left and the violets and stuff going to the right. So as I'm setting up, if I want to make that like a little snow bank there, I might come back with some violets, maybe a little bit more blue into that. Violets, grays, blue violets, I mean, and grays, you know, and push up into that and create the the angle the shadow angle of it so maybe along this water's edge you got a little snow there and the shadow angle of this comes out here so you got light and into shadow right there let's do that right over here so some more of the lighter color let's just put a bank right in here and this is where you can really get textured as well it's up to you and then we'll put up and i'll just push in like this to this side and push in the shadows to it on that side there see so it makes it you look really really rough right in there that's and I like that I'm gonna push a little more light right up there and see that's every time I do that that's advancing it off of there and I like it in there but it's advancing it and let's push a little shadow here, a little bit of shadow. There, maybe just a touch of shadow. Break some of that up a bit. There we go. Light and shadow on that snow there. You could use your knife too as you put this in. Use your knife. Just try not to make it like a checkerboard or anything like that. Just look for natural breaks and uh, so of, of, of the light coming this way, shadow going back that way. Natural breaks of it. Let's put a little bit of light right along here. That's a bit much. We'll lift some of that texture off. The texture causes it to advance sometimes. And then we'll grab some shadow 
and pull some shadow down this way. See, it makes it look like a little clump of snow right there. And you can always take a bit of your, thin this out a bit, of your browns and, and stuff and paint back out to take some of that out. It doesn't have to, and till you get a good landscape feeling to it. So sometimes take some of that out. You need a good landscape. What I mean by that is you're, you're going to have uh, some nice horizontals here that is going to set the plane. So maybe I want to take a nice horizontal right back through here that says it's heading back into those trees. Maybe a bit of my violet in there. But softer, right? It gets softer because it's heading further back back there. So it's softer and stuff. But that gives the, you know, the gentle look of the trees and stuff we have there. Now, we can take some of this violet. So some quinacridone, some blue, this beautiful violet. Lighten it just a touch here. That's a little too much violet. A little more blue. Beautiful color here. You can dirty it down a bit, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just take it right over here so it's a little softer and uh, add some of that back here. That's a little dark, so I'll lighten that up. Break that up just a bit. Now this is also the color you can use as the mist back here. But see, one reason why I'm doing it, like right there, right now, and that might be just a too much, a touch too much violet, get a little more gray in there, um, is so that it uh, carries some of this violet further back into the painting. I'm always, I always tell you guys, always look for places to carry those tones in your painting, through your painting. That's what helps harmonize your whole painting. So as I take some of these lighter violets right here, just little whispers of them back up through here, that's bringing that violet of that ice back up into the rest of my painting here. See, taking that right back up through there and it's giving it a harmony. So over here where it looks really warm, I can scumble and it's, it's all misted out so I don't wanna to do too much, but I can scumble which is just kind of dragging the brush over the surface here and break some of that up and grab some of that violet see maybe a bit of that up in here here we go and it's that coolness <laughs> that you get there see it's establishing that coolness and bringing that all forward like that that's not too bad for like an hour you see it and it's a great little you can you know you can get yourself some inexpensive canvases or boards like this and just practice your colors out like this this is this it runs great now uh, probably i like this in here but let's smoosh on some ice so i'm going to take i'll show you real quick we'll take some open medium some of these colors with this and we'll just going to and what do we say about you know that that wet that's underneath and I want to grab this open medium now I put a little bit on and I just want to smoosh this down push hard with your knife and get some of this mixing up in here like this and I can take some of that violet push that in as well and see this is what creates that look of that ice if I wanted it even softer on the edge here I can just pull through a few times and the more I pull through it takes off those little ridges of paint that interest and it turns it more into ice here and so I'll leave maybe a bit of that maybe uh, maybe a, a touch of light coming out at that angle right there here we go just to <clears throat> a little bit little hits this is what makes it pretty is if you just come in and do little marks, little hits of that uh, light from the left side. Little bits of it. And you can go back in, small brush, a little bit of violet, just small brush, 
and soften out, take out, push in. Just leave little bits, little touches there. Kind of like that on that side. And uh, it's a good look. Thin this out a bit. Just drag this. And if you want to make it look like it starts to go underwater, then you've got to get a little bit more like the the colors there that are uh, already in the water. So you can, if you push that in there like that, see, and if I just take a little edge of that light, you know, like it right before it goes underwater, you make it look like that ice goes right underwater there, like that. See, so all kinds of really neat ways. And I can really bring, and I think I will, I'm going to take a real dark violet and some extender here so that I thin it out a little bit. So I'm not super, super powerful, but I can really establish my center of interest with my lights and darks in here, just glazing through now there right up here and how much of this you put on is your call because this is high contrast here this is high contrast right in here and this is my number 10 and I'm just whispering in that real dark violet right there maybe we'll have just a little bit of the warmth right in there breaking that color a touch maybe some of the light coming back the other way break that up a bit and see it's that plane of those colors let's get this dark right through that just gently light 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 pressure just pull through pull through light 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 pressure and that will establish highs and lows of that that dark but now look at that dark that's right there how much do you want to have that much contrast? That's up to you. Boom, maybe you do. There we go. Yeah, a little bit of light. Right up there, just model that together. Boom, like that. Boom, maybe a touch of this back up over here. Remember, carry that color through. Maybe you pick up a touch of that right through there which would be good harmony through maybe uh, a whisper of that color through some of these other areas just so the viewer sees that color right it's important that you don't you know that these colors harmonize that you see them moving through here we go and I think I'll do it I think maybe I'll take some of this gray, just real soft. Smoosh that, that's a little too, got some violet in there. Maybe some open medium with this. Smoosh it, maybe some extender. This thins it, slides it, just real thin color. Just to break up that. Touch more interest, just a little more interest there. Here we go, something like that like that that's pretty good and so I don't have an exact use the brush here so I don't have an exact we'll just break the line here there we go just like that so it's most important I can heave that a little heavier right in there but you know you you don't want to have a a perfect straight line it has to be broken a little bit I'll do that, and I like this painting. Nice winter scene. We have a few more winter scenes that I want to do, and also I want to do the, the dashing through the snow. So, you know, you could lighten up right up through here a bit more. You know, take some of your lighter gray. So the gray is your burnt sienna and blue, and then take some of that, lighten it up over here, little yellow, some of this color, little yellow in there and break some of this up with a touch more light here through here just maybe a touch more yellow green 
just so it's not all dark over here into this corner. And uh, if you get too much, then just take some of your darker colors and go back through. And but it's that it's that constant back and forth with those tones that gives it all that pretty colors and stuff. All right. But uh, yeah, that's just a lot of fun. So bringing it up here and letting it go back into its grays back there, letting this go back. I could, you know, I think I will, will do that. Well soften this so this ridge line sets back just a little farther right back there so you see that ridge line coming up this way and let's break that a bit more here we go so you get a better angle right through there and that one just takes off back there real soft and um yeah you could you could play this all day but I think this is enough. I think this is pretty. And sometimes you start doing too much. You're going to you're going to ruin it. So you want to get out before you start doing that. So there we go. That's pretty good. well maybe a little over here. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Thanks very much guys. Hope you enjoyed that. So you can see I didn't use I used a lot of paint. So when you're putting out a lot of paint, you don't need to put out that much. You can, but you do need a lot of white in there. And so I use the extender anytime I want anything thin in the slide, the, the open medium to get some of that thickness. And especially right up in front up in here, you can get that thicker paint, which helps it advance. And you can use that open medium in there and use a combination of the brush and the painting knife here. And this is the, the painting knife. The painting knife has a Z bend in it. So you can hang on to it and slide. And it's made to really get down and slide along that edge. That's what you really want to do with that. Okay. But, um, and use the knife. Put, you know, put it on with the knife. Soften it with that. Remember, light on the left. Shadow on the right. Violets on the left. Yellows. A little bit of, uh, excuse me, whites and yellows. And some of those warmer grays on to the left and stuff and then cooler to there and remember gray gray to your colors as you go back and you got it it's a lot of fun okay thanks very much so there's a nice winter scene we're going to do a couple more um i have another uh, animal uh, or i want to paint another uh, uh, elk portrait with you we got that coming up some more bird portraits and of course our flowers and stuff so stay tuned to the channel make sure you subscribe down there hit that subscribe button if you want to see our videos click that little bell if you want to be notified when that when we launch a video we try to do one to two videos a week sometimes a little bit more I have a couple of more of those technique videos that I might do three to four a week here we have those uh, ready to film up too so I'll do that so but make sure you subscribe and kick click that little bell so you get notified when a video comes up okay and as always please leave a comment down there and uh, if you have something you want to see me paint just drop it into the comments okay okay guys there you go i'll see you on the next one